Hey everybody, I'm Patricia. Hey, I'm Patrick. And we're the Pop Culture Twins with another episode of Inside the Cage. So, Patrick, I got a question for you. How do you feel about women with muffin tops? I'm not a big fan of the muffin top. In fact, there's a weight limit for my bedroom. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I'm at the age now, I haven't got time to picking anyone up if they tip over. <laughs> so, no, no muffin tops. Uh, in fact, I mean, I don't think, I don't think a woman would want a man with a muffin top. You? Funny you should, you should say that. See, that's the problem. We as women, we're so accepting. We let our men get away with everything, and we're so accepting enough of them having a little weight on them. So it's, it's okay, but sometimes I'm, I'm getting a little angry because I like keeping my mind flat and in, in shape, but for me, but yeah. I'd like them to do the same. I'm not asking them to have a washboard stomach. I'm not asking for a six pack, a little flat, because for me, it's for health purposes. I feel like having a little weight on the stomach is not good for your internal organs and things like that. And I've even investigated with Dr. Oz, my favorite TV doctor. He said that the average waist for a man should be 35 inches. Now, if you had a 35 inch waist, would that be no. a pinch or a grab on you? That'd be like another person. That's too big. 35? That's a lot of weights. That's a lot of weights. Because he said that women should be about, I think about 32. And then I thought 32, I said, that would be a serious grab I'm a 30, for me. I'm a 32. If I had a 32 inch waist, that would be a serious yeah. grab for yeah. me. So even he's saying there's a little, little leeway there, which I could go with. But I'm not going with, you know, I, have you seen this new term called the dead bod? Yeah, yeah, I'm not have a fan you, of that. Have you seen the picture that yeah, they show the yeah. example? I said that's yeah. not. That's. I that's want to just tickle him. <laughs> <laughs> you look like Pillsbury Doughman. Well, I came up with a solution. I came up with a solution one day, just sitting outside with my girlfriend. We were just watching guys walk by, and I said, "Why can't we have a scale?" And I said, "If I had a scale, how would I have that?" that gauge, what would be my best, and what would be like going down into the, the plummeting, you know, down, down the scale. And I thought, who would I pick if I wanted that? And I said, how about Hugh, as in Hugh Jackman, or Homer? And the reason why I picked Hugh and Homer is because Hugh is like my favorite film actor. Homer, my favorite TV actor, you know, or character, if you want to say that. That's how I would gauge my men, you know? and. And then, and then I was like, and what inspired me was one of my favorite films of the 90s, Clueless. Because Cher, Alicia Silverstone, Silverstone's character, Cher, had a little, she had a scale for good guys and loser guys. And her good guys were called Baldwins, based on the Baldwin brothers, the acting brothers, you know, Alec, Daniel, um, Billy, and Steve. Why'd she call them that? Because they, I mean, they look good. They, oh, okay, 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 You're, you're oh, a yeah. Baldwin. Okay, but yeah. then, okay. if you were a loser in her book, she was like, why are you messing with that Barney? Okay. As in Barney Rubble. And I was like, not Barney, the, the purple dinosaur, you know, from the morning yeah. show for the kids, children's show. But she was like, Barney Rubble. I thought Barney Rubble was kind of cute. I hate to say that. Because, you know, he had Betty, and Betty was like, all oh, that. Yeah, you can but, take Betty down. Yeah, so, <laughs> so that's why I thought, I said, Hugh, Homer, and you get the H, H, and H. It's like the Hugh Homer scale. And I was like, because you can't get any better than Hugh Jackman. So, have you ever dated a, had a Homer? Yes. Did you ever have a man, your, your man, he just jiggle it for you? <laughs> jiggly, like, his jiggly bits, he just as, in, with it. as in Niecy Nash would say, <laughs> my jiggly bits. Yeah. No, she doesn't even have jiggly bits. But no, the reason why I picked Hugh Jackman was because Hugh Jackman is just like the epitome of fitness, perfection. I mean, when he's Wolverine, he yeah, is like shit. ripped. But then when he wraps a film, no. He don't lose it. He don't get out of control. His eight pack may go down to a four pack, but he's still holding it down. He's still saying lean and mean. I mean, did you see what he did recently? He joined this um, club called the 1,000 Pound Club. Could you do that? Yeah. You could do that. Yeah, I used to decline 275. Decline, that's not, that's, that's at an angle. Wow. And I squatted 410. <clears throat> and what was the other one? I think dead lift, yeah, dead lift is nothing. I mean, you just lift it up, you just, it's all back. You just lift it up. 
Well, his lean little self just pulls it off. I mean, because he's just straight up and down. He's really lean right now. He's not really like. Do I have an eight pack? He does too. Well, he has seven and a half. <laughs> no, I'll take it. But then on the other hand, and on the other end of the scale is my, my boy Homer. And I love Homer Simpson. He's adorable. But he loves his donuts and beer. And but, I can't hate on him for that. But would that affect your relationship? Yeah, because I'm kind of a fitness kind of person. I'm sorry. I just, it's not that I'm asking for him that I don't want an eight-pack. Never had a guy with an eight-pack or you know, a six-pack. I don't need that. Flat, but I'm thinking in terms of health terms, health. Have you ever had a homer? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, who? <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear this one. I'm not going to mention that. No? I did, yeah. Really? Yeah, I did. He was a secret? Yeah. Twins don't tell <laughs> he was a everything. Well, Twins you, don't share everything. Oh, that's like us in our nine o'clockers. What's your nine o'clockers? You don't know what nine o'clockers is? I don't know what a nine I've never been a nine o'clocker because I'm a GTS no. and goody two shoes. A nine o'clocker is someone you can't be seen. We like to hang out with or whatever. But is there restrictions? <laughs> um she can't go in familiar places that you frequent. You probably take her through a drive through before you take her in some sort of in, inside to sit down. And you don't be seen with her before 9 o'clock because it's daytime. 9 o'clock at night? Yeah. <laughs> oh, really? So she's 9 o'clock. A 9 o'clocker? Yeah, everyone has one. Or, or has had one. But isn't that kind of like a booty call? Uh, a booty yeah, call but like booty like calls can be... Yeah, that's like... A, it's a booty call. But it's it's with restrictions. With restrictions. Yeah, with restrictions. It's like, you know, just yeah, it's a restriction. Well it's like I don't wanna call celebrities out, celebrity men out, but I really want them to understand and let the everyday man understand that they go through their the same problems with their perfection of how they want their, their body to, to look, whether it's the fittest to not looking their best and so, you know, some of them keep it toned, some of them let it go. But I wanted to kind of have a talk t with you about the Hugh Homer scale because I'm not buying this dad bod. This well, dad bod is just a pure excuse for our men not to want to take care of themselves. And they're going to get lazy. But then, God forbid if I put on a pound, God forbid if I have a little muffin muffin top because they'll go, oh, no, babe. You, I mean, I've had, I know girls who've lost their husbands because they told them, you can't wait, babe, I'm leaving you. And yeah, they did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've known. I that. don't get that. Why? I, I why couldn't? Why couldn't? That. Why couldn't it, that wouldn't be a reason for me to leave. But why? Would well, maybe. Be? I've never experienced that though. Because <laughs> you've never I been. Say that. You've never been married. Well, no. I mean, I've never been with someone that they transform into someone that was unattractive to. Well, let's talk about a few. Let's start. Let's start with my my favorite FWB. Yes, my favorite white boy, Channing Tatum. Channing can do no wrong in my eyes. You know, right now he's sporting that magic mic body. Yeah. He's sporting it around. He's looking. He looks good. Looking ripped. But when Channing raps, now he's probably done with press on magic mic. Then he's going to Homertown. He loves to put on a little, really? like, he likes to become a little dough boy. But like, you can make that you can go back and forth. What's wrong with that? Yeah, that's not a problem. Yeah. I can take him with that. He's a little, he gets a little doughy. Yeah. But I'm just saying, I'm watching you, Channing. He can afford to. I'm going to have to give some tough love to Leonardo DiCaprio. He just, you know, he's turned 40, and, you know, when you're 40, you want to just get better. Uh-uh, Leo, in between, right now, I th I'm just saying, I'm just giving him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe you're in between movies, Leo. The little, I can tell when he gets the chipmunk cheeks, and he starts growing the beard, then that's when I know I don't even have but, to look below, below the neck. But, but he's Leo. Have you seen Russell Crowe lately? He's gone from gladiator no. to I don't know what. Yeah, my man. Yes, but see, Russell's another one. He'll lean on the men if he has to do it for a movie role, but right now, he's happy being in Homerville. And he does not care, doesn't give a care. Well, I mean, sometimes you have to go there. It's like uh, something that happened to get him motivated back, whether it be a script or a woman, something happened. It, once you've had it, you can get it back. What I didn't like was the press saying, oh, well, here's two actors that are kind of like the mod role models for being a dad bod, Jason Segel and Seth Rogen. And I'm like, number one, they're Seth not Rogen. even they're not even dads. So why are you using their body type? And, uh, and they barely have a little thing. Well, who wants little, to look like Seth Rogen? But they're look Seth Rogen, he's gaining and losing weight because of movie roles as well. But when he was 
you know, had a little weight on him. He wasn't a homer. I say he's like a borderline Hugh homer, but he's not a homer. And, it's, and it's Jason Siegel isn't either. So I was thinking, like, you guys are giving the wrong example of what a dad bod. I really need to know what do you mean by a dad bod because the dads that are out there in entertainment, they're holding it down. I mean, you know, Ashton Kutcher, Ryan Reynolds, Ryan Gosling, and Jimmy Fallon all become new dads within the last few years. You don't see them losing, losing their minds and, and gaining a ton of weight. Will Smith. Been a dad well, a long time. Yeah, You've yeah, seen Will yeah, Smith lately. Well, yeah, Will Smith. Have Will Smith, s- LL. Yeah, they're not. They're like they look, they look keeping it lean yeah. and mean. You know, and then like even our old school actors. You got Sly Stallone, Liam yeah. Neeson, Dolph Lundgren. Yeah, Dolph Lundgren at fifty-seven. I mean, he is holding it down. And then Robert De Niro. And the man who's the king of fluctuating weight because of movie roles, yeah. he still keeps it lean yeah. and mean, and he's you know keeping it healthy. He's got kids, he's got wives. Is that the prerequisite? You have to be a dad. That, well, I don't get this dad bod. Like why? Oh, I see what like, you're saying. They, yeah. they keep calling it the dad bod, but you can't put somebody, you can't use somebody as an example who's not a dad. Especially when they said Jason Segel and Seth Rogen. I'm like, they're is, they're uh, not dads. Is he a dad? Yes, he is a dad. Really? Yes, yeah. he's a dad. He's got two kids. Hmm. He's holding it down. Yeah, yes, know. Hugh Jackman. Yeah, Hugh Jackman. He's just perfection. What can I say? He was good in Wolverine. We have to talk about some homers. You know, Kevin James. I love him. Sweetest guy. Great actor. He's funny. He is funny. So we're going to keep doing but, Paul Blart. But, but don't you think part of his, his comedic likeness is because he's overweight? Well, when he did the movie Here Comes the Boom, he was playing an MMA fighter. I remember him in the interview saying, I want this to be the first time in a movie role. I'm going to get in shape. I'm going to be in the best physical shape of my life. <laughs> has, he, has he ever been in shape? He had some definition in his arms, really? but he still had. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. I was really? like, I was all excited. I wanted to see Kevin. I wanted to see Kevin James the way it, I thought I would have seen they him. They weren't even when down was, the muffin tops yet. They would, he hasn't even gotten down there yet. But my hero is Kevin Smith, director Kevin Smith. He has done the most extreme transformation and has lost 85 pounds. And it kind of turned, things turned around from him when he went on a Southwest flight and they told him he had to buy another seat. No. Yes. And that was a rude awakening for him. And no. he's lost so much weight that he got into a jacket, suit jacket that he hasn't worn in like until like when he first got famous. He wore this blazer and the blazer is too big. He's like smaller than what he was years ago when he wore that blazer. And he is just, he did juicing. He started doing a lot of juicing and, wow. and slowly got it back. I wonder, and, I wonder what that feeling is like to get on that plane and be told that you got to play another ticket. Yeah. Buy another ticket. He said, yeah, he said that that was his turning point. And but he was at an unhealthy place if that's the case. He was. I mean, I met him years ago when he had put on a, up some pounds and... And I was talking, we were talking about his wife. His wife is beautiful. He's got a gorgeous wife. But, but and he was like, I don't even know what she wants with me. I'm just a fat slob. And I sat there and I went, I said, you don't see you. I said, you don't see yourself like I see you. I said, I think you're adorable. I have a crush on him. He's a good guy. With the, with the muffin tops. He had the weight on him at the time. Not as big as what he had gotten to the, the biggest point, but I had seen him a few years ago when he did have the weight on him. Do you think that she was cool with the weight? It doesn't matter though. That's, who, she's still with her. Who cares what? She's yeah, still, she's happy. Yeah, who, still, who well, I mean, what? but let, let's talk about from your perspective. I mean, we have to put you in the category of being an extreme hue at the the top of the top of the scale of extreme of being a hue because you know, and there's that rare rare group like The Rock, LL Cool J. Which LL Cool J to me, he's like a real life superhero. I met him once, and I'm just like, oh my god, real life superhero. I mean, he can't get any fitter than that. I mean, you, and and I'll show you the picture of how he looks, and like all ripped, at, you know. But how much work does it take to maintain that? I mean, I, um, my thing is diet. I think, I think you have to. Whatever you do the most of, you have to do the healthiest of. We eat more than we probably work out. So I think they say 80% of your diet should be healthy, 20% could be off. But we're taught to eat according to carbohydrates and protein, which to me is incorrect. It should be, we should, our diet should consist of alkaline foods and acidic foods. But people don't know the difference. And it's all alkaline foods 
grow under the ground or just above the ground. The further away from the ground a food grows, the more acidic it becomes. But it doesn't mean it's unhealthy because our body needs acid. So like uh, lemon is high in acid, but it's alkaline forming when ingested. But we're not taught to eat that diet. And some of the foods on the alkaline and acidic list, we wouldn't even eat them, like meats. I don't see, I don't eat meat at all. Because nothing dead can give you life. So how can it be nutritional if it's dead? But, we're, but it's an industry involved with that, so they don't educate you about that. They just want you to participate in it. So my thing is diet is the number one thing. And then you have to incorporate some, you know, as far as working out. But I'm extreme on both levels. But that's just me. So I have an extreme diet program, and, I, and then when I work out, I'm all in. And then once you, 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 you adopt that way of life, that lifestyle, it just becomes how you live. And I think people, if, if you really want to, if you don't like what you see in the mirror, then you, you have the option to change it. I mean, there's so many men, so little time, we can't get to them all, but this is just my way of dealing with this dad bod thing. I'm not having it. So if you feel like you can deal with this Hugh Homer scale, please let me know, because I think it's a better, a better thing to deal with and can give our men some help where they can say, hey, today I'm a, I'm a low level hue. Oh, today I'm borderline, borderline humor. You know, it's, it just gives, gives the guy a little hope, you know? Yeah, I you agree. Know? It's, it's like how a woman gets on the scale and she's like, oh, okay, I got a little weight off. Oh, I put a little weight on. It'd be like the guy go, hey, I'm, I'm kind of like a mid-level hue. Oh, okay, I'm borderline homer. It sounds a little more hopeful than just dad bod. Dead bod. You yeah. settling for that? I don't think so. Yeah, I, I can't go. It's just too negative yeah, for yeah. me. I'm like, it's not working for me. It's like it's uh, be, because you have this weight and you use the dad title as an excuse to look that way. Right, and not yeah. do anything about it. So yeah. I'm saying, let me know what you think. What do you think of the Hugh Homer scale and should we get rid of this dad bod craziness? It's just, it has to go. I'm just and, not feeling and, it. And do you have a dad bod man at home? Or a nine o'clocker. <laughs> That's all that we have going on in our pop culture world today, but definitely tune in next time, and we'll see you on another episode of Inside the Cage. See ya.